Hello, I'm Joan Manson of Manson Fine Art, and I am here today to share with you uh, my first project using the Zorn palette, which is red and uh, yellow okra, black and white. Originally, as I explained in the video, he used uh, a vermilion, not the permanent red, and he used a ivory black, which has some blue in it, and he used a flaky white. Well, those things aren't available in Pan Pastel, so I'm as close as I can be to get it, and I'm at really interested in seeing how this project plays forward. I hope you'll enjoy it. I know either did, and I'm looking forward to more work with this limited palette and experimenting with it. Thank you so much for joining me today, so let's move on. And I'm going to start using the permanent red to work on the crown and the underbeak of this lovely fowl, chicken, rooster, whatever it is. <laughs> I really am not good at identifying them. And it really didn't say at the site that I downloaded it. It's um, I downloaded this from Wildlife Reference Photos. I get many of my reference photos there as well, worth it, and I reuse them over and over again when I experiment with different media. Now the palette is yellow okra, uh, ultramarine blue, permanent red, black, and white. The original Zorn palette was yellow okra, vermilion, ivory black, and flaky white. There was no blue, but when he needed it, Zorn, it's named, this palette is named for Anderson Zorn, uh, would use cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is a little bit brighter than, uh, than this blue. And while it's named the uh, Zorn's palette, because Zorn used this in his paintings, he was a very well-known portrait artist, painted the portrait of Grover Cleveland that hangs in the White House and many wealthy people around the world. He um, popularized this limited palette, but this palette it originated probably in the fourth century. And of course, I think a large part of the reason was that there wasn't, there weren't so many colors available, and people did create their paints for the most part by themselves using natural elements: uh, clay dyes from plants, coal. And I'm using a baton applicator. This comes from Jane Davenport. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive. You can buy a container of 20 of these for under $8. Probably less if you shop around a little bit more. And I'm dabbing the white onto the permanent red. And if you've used Pan Pastels before, you know that with any pastel, you can pick up the color beneath while you're blending it, so you'll, in effect, be blending on the paper and create a lovely shade of pink. I really enjoy working on black paper. This is Kansen Mitian's uh, media paper, and it's a 9 by 12. I like the way colors blend against the black. I like the way they stand out and they vibrate and they are, of course, at times muted by the black. It's, com it's a com stark, just a complete difference, a stark difference from working on white. Of 
Working with the black paper is also an additional aid while working with the limited palette or any palette at all. When you lay down your initial colors, you're laying down your midtones. As you blend it down, shade is and shadow is being created. Your darks are being added for you. And you can bring in your lights to bring highlight, and then you have your lights, your darks, and your midtones. I'm adding a little bit of the red and a little bit of the black to create shadow within the comb. Well, I have done pieces in Pan Pastel that I added a lot of applications of colored pencil to pastel pencils. In this one I'm just going to be doing a few touch-ups. I really like the impressionistic style, the softness that comes from working with the pan pastel, just the pan pastel. So I, whenever I can I like to use just a few pencils for a little extra detailing or from areas that you can't get well defined when you're using the pan pastel like the eyeball, or fine lines in the comb, or detailing on the quill. Now I'm going to start working on the feathers on the throat of the bird. Mixing a little bit of the red with the okra. And you can see as I'm pulling down from the top to the bottom, I'm creating shade because the black is showing through and giving me that extra step.
Now I'm adding the red and the black to create a, a brown tone and working on the back. And I'm just doing short strokes from the top to the bottom. The darker areas are at the bottom. And black and red does make a, a very nice brown because of the blue that is in the black paint. There's almost purple hue to it. Although I wouldn't use the two colors to create a purple. Now I'm just overlaying the okra. The yellow ochre yeah, lays very nicely on top of the red and the blue. It's a it's an opaque color. It really does hold its own very well. I'm using a triangular sponge here just to soften that area of the pastel. And it allows me to create the the notion of individual feathers. I use the point of the triangular applicator for that. And now I'm adding a highlight with in terms of the okra. As I said earlier, as I lay down the color, I'm laying down a mid-tone, and then I come back and I highlight it. In some areas, I'll add some black so that I can create shadow, but that shadow is not as dark as the background. In other areas, I don't have to add anything at all because I have the black in place. I'm using the edge of the applicator to lay in the yellow ochre and give the indication of individual feathers. And as I lay another color on top of one that's already down, the two colors are blending together. So not only can you blend your pastels in the tins or on a separate piece of paper, but you can blend them, which is what I like to do, on the paper that you're working on. And what's nice about laying the white down on the black paper is that it's not purely white. It is in stark contrast to the colors around it. But you can see the black coming through and giving you the indication of grays and shadow. And if you wanted to, you could tint the white with one of the colors that you're using. But I like this contrast, especially with the black background. And the baton applicator is really very comfortable for me to use. It does a good job 
I can drag with it, I can make circles with it, or I can just dot colors down. And I'm using the edge of the applicator tool as well as the, the rounder part. It is really very nice, as I said earlier, to work with the black paper because I have my dark down already and it is so much easier to just deal with light and mid-tone. Look a little bit fuzzier, which is much better. I think more of the okra and the white. Make it lighter. Adding a touch of the okra light that I created. The white is too stark. Cover up the white lines. Now 
Lift low brown, low gray in front of the chest. I just don't want that charcoal line to appear. There we go. That's much better. Here yeah, I want a bit of a shadow. That's much better. And I bring in a few more touches of white. Just like that, there are uh, there's a bespeckling of white feathers on the chest of this bird, and it's very interesting. Let's move up higher. Better. Now I'm ready to work on the tail feathers. Now I know that all artists work differently in terms of when they use their pencils, and they may work the head and then go back with pencils. I prefer to get as much of the pan pastel as I can and then go back with my pencils to do fine detailing over the entire bird. I don't like to work in that sections in that respect with the pencils. It's okay for it's what you do for colored pencils um, because there's a, it's, it's a tedious job and you want to be sure you're getting everything just right. But I'm letting my pen pastels do the greater amount of work here. Now there's a white feather right here. Better on it's the black. Okay. I'm going to go back with pencil. There are the for the for the quill or the vein. I'm going to go back with the pencil to do those, but I'm going to have a direction of my work here done with the pan pastel applicators and the pan pastel.
Now, I use my round edge applicator. And to show you what I'm doing a little bit better. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of the blue And then I'm going to take a touch of the white and the black to create a gray. And use this brush, this sponge applicator, to create the sense of feathers. I'm just going to put a, a spot here to indicate where the white vein will go. Okay. Now, through here. shadow there. Now, the pen pastel is a little bit darker than the black paper that I'm using. So in some instances I can use the black In others, I can't. I need a little bit more black. And to create a contrast a little bit grayer, I'll take my little feathering sponge. I do like this sponge. And you can use any side of it if you want. You can use it for spreading down, but I love using the tip of this brush.
Yeah. Now, there's an area here where because of the reflected light, this looks like turquoise. So I'm going to attempt to make turquoise. I'm taking yellow ochre and blue. Make a green. And add a little bit more blue. Make a turquoise and a little black to that. And if I think it doesn't work right, I'll work on it some more. A little too much yellow. There we go. Takes practice in the blending. And over time, I will master this, the blending of these colors. Quite a turquoise, needs a little bit more dark blue. I'm going to have to work on creating turquoise. And it may have come up as a turquoise when it was on white paper. But these are things you have to work on.
I'm going to have to work on the green part. I'm going to add first blue. And do the blending on the paper. And the yellow. And do the blending on the paper. And more blue. Letting it blend into the colors beneath it. Alright, I have, make sure you can see this correctly, um, done the grass. I'm going to spread it out a little bit more. Using the blue and the okra and white and touches of black. Now my next step will be working with the pencils, but as far as I'm concerned, in terms of it being a perfect pen pastel piece, um, it is. It's soft, it's lovely, it's impressionistic, it doesn't need the fine detail unless I want to go to something more super realistic. So at this point, this piece is complete, but in my next video, I'm going to be bringing in the colored pen pastel pencils and making finer details to bring it to the state of uh, greater realism, not photorealism. I don't do photorealism. Um, I haven't the patience for it.
but I am going to bring this to a, a closer state of realism. I'm back, and I have selected a few pencils. I have my Derwent Bestel Pencil 72 pencil collection here, and I have chosen a white and black, of course, and okra and um, ultramarine blue. I've got a cobalt turquoise, and I have um, cadmium red and olive green and the yellow ochre, of course. I think I mentioned that already. And I am just going to first start off with the crown of the head and add a little bit of very light um, hard edge. It really is just teeny detailing. I'm not going in here and and drawing feather lines everywhere. Um, there may be some on the larger feathers, but I'm, that's not what I'm about to do. I like the soft impressionistic look that I've brought up here and um, the attitude. Now I do need the yellow okra for the eye. And then I'm going to leave a little black spot there. And I'm going to take a little dot of white. Okay, and it's happy. And I'm going to have a little bit more white on the okra. And um, here, a little bit of the black. To create a shadow under the eye so that it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Give that eye a little bit of cute look there. Okay. Now I'm going to use the black pencil to put in a few dark lines. There are some dark dark feathers or um, within this, and I'm going to draw those in. I'm going to come back with white. I don't want it to be too bright, but I'm going to smudge it. Take care of my blending stumps in here instead of my finger. Not because I worry about my finger, but because I don't want to smear it. Okay, very good. And okra. Tiny dashes. You can see the indications of tiny feathers.
And this depends on this area where it has those fluffy little feathers. I wanted to try to add a little more turquoise since I wasn't very successful. And I'm just using the cobalt turquoise. It'll work nicely against the okra. And there is okra and blue beneath this. Just bringing, just following the direction of the feathers. And the white.
So that's a little bit more turquoise. And then this one. to pop up in a few places. Give it a little bit more color there. Like my white. I want to bring in the white quill here. Like that, that's much better. We should have a little more black up here. Make a little bit more of it. Okay. That is very good. I'm very pleased with that. I like the like the strength of that turquoise. There is going to be a video in my future of me trying to blend as many colors as I can with this limited palette. Now, I want to use some touches of okra. Bring in my grass. And then I'm going to bring in olive green. And that's going to fill the whole thing up with the pastel pencils. I rather like the gray, the green gray that I've created in the nest here.
Now the pattern on this chicken is not the same as the pattern in the photograph. I wasn't following it precisely. I really wanted to feel for it. But now I feel that she's as complete as she's going to be, or he is. I don't know. I can't tell a rooster from a chicken. So I'm just referring to this as a fowl who's sitting down in the grass. Because roosters do occasionally sit down. They don't lay eggs, but they do sit down. Uh, thank you for joining me for this brief updated video on the first one. Um, the first was when I did the chicken in the pan pastel. And this is the one where I did the touch-ups with the colored pen the pastel pencils. Thank you once again, and if you enjoyed watching my videos, I do invite you to subscribe and click thumbs up for a like if you like, one way or the other. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.